is Mike Gladlin, and this is my lecture on Gender, Income, Inequality, and Comparative Worth. Gender Bender. Why do child care workers who work with humans get paid less than computer technicians who work with machines? Shouldn't the child care worker get paid more? Shouldn't there be equal pay for equal work? In this lecture, I want to discuss a law called comparable worth where maybe technology teachers and literature teachers get paid the same amount for the same work. Let's begin with some mythical wage where technology teachers get paid W and literature teachers get paid W and there's Q amounts of labor being supplied and demanded in the labor market. So assuming that technology teachers and literature teachers get paid the same amount of money, uh, the market would clear and both would be happy because they're getting paid the same amount for the same amount of work. Um, on some aspect, that's not so far off. They both grade papers, they both have difficult students, they both come to work every day, and they should get paid the same amount for working the same amount of hours. What would happen if suddenly uh, an internet boom would come by and there was a huge demand for technology teachers and kids who used to take literature classes uh, now decide that they're not going to take as many literature classes and presumably they might take more business classes where technology is taught. Well, the supply and demand fundamentals that we teach would be an increase in the demand for technology teachers would raise the equilibrium wage rate from W to W1 or from 1 to 2 and increase the number of teachers hired. And because there was a decrease in the number of literature teachers, then that should follow that the wage would follow uh, fall for literature teachers and there'd be a less quantity demanded. This is what I call the free market response and it reflects the equilibrium clearing point assuming that the free market is allowed to work. But let's say there's a law that says that you got to pay equal pay for equal work. So in this scenario, when the wage rate increases from W to W1, from 1 to 2, let's just say now that we have to pay literature teachers uh, the prevailing wage rate for technology teachers so that they're equal. Given the backward shift of the demand curve now, now employers would only demand Q1 of English teachers because they have to pay them so much. And notice that at wage rate 1 for technology teachers, the increase in technology teachers would increase. So for us to uh, pay literature teachers the same amount as technology teachers, you would notice a drastic reduction in the number of uh, literature teachers that are demanded. Before you were right here, but now because of the higher wage rate, you now have a higher amount of, uh, uh, of unemployed literature teachers. How would you accomplish that? Well, one thing you would do, since you have this huge excess supply of literature teachers, is to make them have more training, make them go through more hoops when they're going through their undergrad work, perhaps maybe make them publish or even be a doctorate. So here you've increased the standards that uh, you're requiring liter te literature teachers to have to teach so that they will be on par with the increase in consumer demand for technology. Is that really comparable? So what happens is the equal pay for both techni uh, technology teachers and literature teachers really reduces the amount of literature teachers that people want. So suppose that you said that, uh, well, let's just keep the wage rate the same. In that case there, you have the increase in the demand for technology teachers. And again, you have the decrease in demand for literature teachers, but you're going to keep W the same. And again, you're going to have an increase in the number of 
uh, technology teachers at that uh, wage rate and a decrease in the number of literature teachers. But how would you get uh, this many more technology teachers to enter the field? Well, one thing you could do would be to reduce their qualifications. Now, instead of going through Hamilton Tech or some school that requires a lot of technical training, you almost have to accept anybody to fulfill the demand for um, students at that wage rate. So you've increased the qua uh, quantity of teachers, but the free market only wants this many demanded, but because you've artificially set the floor right here, the ceiling right there, you've increased the amount of supply of technology teachers. And you do that by reducing the qualifications. Now, the free market output was here. And if we would have kept the wage rate at W1, then we would have had this many people unemployed. But here, you still have more people unemployed than there was at the free market output. So you still have to increase the literature standards for uh, those kind of teachers. Again, you make them write a paper, publish, get a PhD, do extra student teaching or whatever. So whether you increase, let the wage rate increase to W1 or you keep it the same, when there's an increase in the demand for literature teachers followed by a decrease in the demand for literature teachers, literature teachers still get the blunt end of the uh, market because here you can see less is going to be uh, hired than if the free market would have been allowed to uh, run its course. To make the law uh, determine how much people should get paid would not be a very smart thing because um, then you could see that it's going to be a higher unemployment for literature teachers. Let's just accept some wage disparity and let the free market do its job. My name is Mike Gladlin, and you can reach me at www.microeconomics.blogspot.com.